Up next is a session on deliver innovative, sustainable packaging with cutting edge science. Consumers want companies to lead and create a more sustainable future. With the 3D experience platform powering today's innovations and beyond, a new vision of sustainable packaging emerges from design to production to recycling, leading to a lower carbon footprint and a brighter future. I would like to invite Pritesh Prasad, Innovia Partner Sales Manager, Deso Systems, to elaborate more on what the company is doing around sustainable packaging. This session will be followed by a short video by Deso System. Over to you, Mr. Prasad. Hello everyone, I am Ritesh Prasad from Dassault Systems and today I am going to discuss with you on the winning approach to innovative packaging with cutting edge science. So before I go to the topic, let me just take a couple of seconds to introduce my company. We are Dassault Systems, a purpose driven company and we call ourselves a scientific company because we believe in combining art, science and technology for a more sustainable world. And this is uh, relevant today in the topic that we'll discuss in the packaging industry as well. And as of today, we are working with the global leaders in the abroad as well as in India, relevant in the packaging industries. Now to begin with, let's talk about some packaging global trends, which and how they're impacting India as well. According to the Trivium Packaging 2021 Global Buying Green Report, 54% of consumers that were part of the survey take sustainable packaging into consideration while buying the product. 52% of the consumers, they look for information on the recyclability or sustainability of the packaging of the products that they buy. And 57% of consumers are less likely to buy products with packaging with harmful to the, which is harmful to the environment. Now, what is also indicative is that the Generation Z and Millennial are 23% more inclined to pay for sustainable packaging than the older generations. Important is that younger generations recognize the value of sustainable and sustainable packaging. They're actively opting for products that are designed, keeping the preservation of nature in mind. Now, company and brands should take into account the trends towards younger generations. Just think, in India, Generation Z is more than 200 million, where 69 million of them reside in urban areas. These are the consumers of the future, and their spending power will make a difference in the future. If we consider Generation Z and Millennials account for 54% of the global population and 48% of consumer spending, rising to 68% by 2040. Brand manufacturing must reflect their product and provide more sustainable product to target the younger consumer and to compete against the new emerging brands that share the same values as the younger generations. Secondly, the ban on most single-use plastics will take effect from July 1st, 2022, and more regulations are on the way. A lot of states and cities have started banning already. Much more regulation is going to shape the packaging in years to come. To note, uh, currently 60% of plastic waste in India is collected and much less recycled or mostly downcycled. The Plastic Waste, waste Management uh, Rule 2016, they introduced the concept of EPR, the Extended Product Responsibility, to manage plastics in India. While the EPR is still at a nascent stage, uh, the latest draft rules have managed to take a small step in the right direction. In essence, the EPR decreases the environmental impact from a product and its packaging and promotes the concept of polluter pays you know, by holding the producer accountable for the entire life cycle of the product. Traditionally, reuse-based systems have been in use before the invasion of single-use plastics. Refillable is a platform that others refill packs or bottles on home care liquids through an e-truck, which is a mechanism to dispense liquids in the most hygienic method. Asa Beauty, Locatane, Lakme, etc. are coming with reusable refill options for their portfolios. Now, consumers, they are more and more at home, and we see an acceleration to connected commerce. This is driving 
by changing life cycle or I'm sorry lifestyle of consumers growing urbanization and the tech savvy generation who prefers buying products online remotely experience before you buy 360 degree information about the product and the new delivery modes this has been raised in particular during the pandemic times that we have seen live. As a matter of fact, the Indian online grocery market size was estimated at USD 2.9 billion in 2020 and is expected to reach USD 4.3 billion in 2021. Pressure will be put on packaging to ensure that packaging are sustainable and safe. Now, sustainable packaging is always a concern for companies that are looking to use environmentally friendly products. Now, taking a holistic approach to sustainable packaging means that your business considers the full extent of consequences of the packaging that you use from the way it is produced till it is eventually disposed when it is no longer needed. This means that considering the packaging as a system with an ecosystem of various parties from your suppliers, your manufacturers, logistic providers, retailers and your customers. Let's talk about the sustainability and innovation in the food packaging. Right? Home delivery habit. The home delivery market in India will grow at a CAGR of more than 23% during the forecast period of 2019 to 2025. Home delivery market in India is segmented into self-delivery, shared delivery, and third-party delivery. Now, shared delivery and self-delivery are anticipated to have significant shares in the home delivery market due to change in the routine, lifestyle, and food habits, and with it, the package. Now, eco-friendly, reusable, even edible has become the buzzword for the food delivery business. Indian cuisine is cooked at very high temperatures. So if you had to transfer the contents to a plastic container for delivery or to heat in the microwave, the flavors will change. So a lot is going on in the making of these containers, reusable, eco-friendly and preserving the customer experience. Now let's take a look at some of the challenges for a flexible uh, packaging circular economy. Now, the flexible packaging has seen you know, a huge success in the years back and it is very tough to switch. Now, leading to the past years, they have made the flexibles more sustainable. Now, currently, transporting one truckload of unfilled flexible pouches is equivalent to transporting 26 truckloads of unfilled glass jars for the same amount of product. Because of this success, pivoting to alternate materials or other options would need a whole lot of testing and trial runs and validations to be done. And it would take a lot of time and resources as well. Another aspect is the lack of infrastructure for mass recycling. Now, all across the global uh, globe, proper infrastructure to support recycling for rigid packaging is ramping up. Even with this push, Percentage of recycling is not yet ideal. Now with the case of flexibles, it is even more difficult. Like in the US and Europe, there are few proper infrastructures for flexibles, but it is far and wide, which limits access to consumers in other genes. Another aspect is, uh, you know, the confusion by the consumers. Now add to the above point, even in the US or the Europe, there is no clear customer awareness and education on what to do with flexibles. And with the surplus of flexible packaging available and during the pandemic has made most of them end in landfills. Now, when it comes to food, cosmetics or household products, flexibles have additional layers of complexity. Now, this has to do with having layers of specific purposes, the particular layer on the outside to ensure the protection of the flexibles during transportations and handling, layer to highlight the artwork and labeling, inner layer to protect the food, cosmetic, or the product inside. Now, this multi-layer makes it very complex to recycle. Hence, you see the push to go for mono materials. Now, how do we address these challenges? Now, technology has come or are in play, which provides you a different aspects to make sure that the initiative or the KPIs that the organization has put in can be met in terms of what material to be used, what testing to be done, so the R&D departments can devise or they can do some research to make sure that they have the right material with the right combination of different sustainable materials to make sure the packaging material is defined properly. Once the material is defined, 
you basically do a kind of a detailed design of how the packaging would look like, what would be the design aspect of it, do a life cycle assessment to make sure that the carbon footprint is managed properly, which can be one of the KPIs of the organization. Plus, we need to do lots of trials and testing and validations on the design itself. Post that, it's very important to make sure that the logistics are managed as well, starting from where the material is received till it goes out once the material is not used. So the complete planning of where and what would be done to the packaging can be defined virtually before even it is launched in the market. Also, in addition to that, we can use this technology to educate the customers and to enhance this experience as well. Now, there are certain QR codes available that gives all the information as to what are the materials used, how it can be recycled, which are the current location, and where the nearest location where it can be disposed of as well. We introduce the concept of a you know, digital twin, wherein or a virtual twin that allows you to visualize the end-to-end -end life cycle of this packaging uh, from the concept to design to find the unit codes on the flow soft floor and to the consumer before even you launch it in the market. Now this is how uh, a technology or an application or a company can support the packaging industry to make sure that they manage or they reach their KPI of sustainability in the circular economy. Now let me just showcase to you a short video. Developing sustainable packaging that can serve a community of brand manufacturers is critical to supporting a circular economy. In this demonstration, a consumer packaged goods industry coalition is developing a packaging platform for a new bottle. Inspired by a mood board, work begins on finding the right eco-efficient packaging material that will be recyclable but also protect the product formula. Bioplastics like PLA can be used as the inner layer of product packaging. PLA is compostable and recyclable and could replace existing polymers which are derived from fossil fuels. But PLA is semi-permeable to water, which limits its applicability. But if some nanoclays, like montmorillonite and kaolinite, are added to the PLA, the molecular structure can be changed to decrease its permeability to water and protect the product formula inside. The formulation scientist uses Biovia modeling and simulation tools to model and compare the effect of adding different nanoclays by using molecular dynamics. Here we find that adding montmorillonite significantly decreases permeability. The creative designer uses X-shape to design new packaging concepts. Intuitive push-pull interaction shapes the design quickly. The mechanical designer takes the packaging concept and makes a 3D design and begins to implement design details using X-Design, an intuitive cloud-based modeling solution. Working on the cap, for example, the designer can create details like adding ridges for grip and branding placement. While understanding and designing how the different layers of materials that constitute the packaging will fit together. Creating different size packages is done with simple clicks. The simulation designer is testing two different perforation configurations on the outer package shell. This analysis will determine which design will enable the inner bioplastic layer to be removed with ease. The design on the left has failed while a slightly modified design is validated. Using advanced simulation, the package is tested for performance in a variety of simulated environments. The package will need to maintain structural integrity on its journey to the consumer. This includes an e-commerce environment. The bottle can be assessed on how it will hold up under weight strain in a stacked pallet, for example. Here, the simulation designer ensures the newly designed cap will be undamaged in transit. The eco-engineer determines the environmental impact of design choices, like using aluminum or plastic for the cap, using life cycle assessment to support decision making. The engineer assigns validated environmental data from all the human activities utilized in the entire product life cycle for the design choice of using aluminum for the cap material. The data is third party validated and assesses the total environmental footprint. The range of environmental data is calculated for both design options. This includes CO2 emissions, water usage, fossil depletion, and ozone depletion among a range of other indicators. The design with aluminum cap is analyzed and compared with corporate objectives. The life cycle assessment, or LCA, visually shows the impact of each material and activity contributing to the overall footprint. This is critical to understand problematic hotspots, make smart design choices, and continuously improve. The design with the plastic cap is also assessed, but the environmental winner is clear. It's the aluminum cap choice. Plotting design alternatives on an environmental chart provides more understanding.
The mold designer creates the mold and bioplastic preform that will be blown into the mold to create the critical inner layer. Both halves of the molds can be created on the platform based on the dimensions of the packaging design. The preform mold is virtually tested to ensure that the bioplastic layer will be blown into the mold properly. The experience creator is tasked with building consumer awareness and encouraging participation in the circular journey. Using the Creative Experience app, a QR code is created which provides information on how the consumer can recycle the product easily and how the recycling journey will work. It also informs the consumer of the closest convenient recycling locations. To plan proper locations, the Demand Planner assesses the data to determine which geographic zones will be optimal for placement of the new Ecolution pods, which will be Material Recovery Facilities, or MRFs, used to facilitate the recycling process. The Equipment and Automation Engineer uses Creative Experience to explore how the MRF pods will operate. The MRFs will accommodate four main activities, including sorting, processing, storage, and loadout of packaging that has been dropped off by consumers. The MRF should promote efficient and effective operation of a recycling program and may be publicly or privately owned and operated. The MRF serves as an intermediate processing step between the collection of recyclable materials and the sale of those materials to markets for use in making new products. Here the engineer is exploring how the packaging will be scanned and sorted as a key element to facilitate its circular journey. The logistics planner uses Delmia Quintig software which supports reverse logistics in a sustainable way. For CO2-based optimization, the planner calculates the most environmentally friendly route plans for trucks without violating constraints like electric vehicle ranges and low emission zones. The planner compares plans to see the impacts to all KPIs and total costs to make the most informed planning decisions. Adding a fourth strategic MRF pod location has an immediate beneficial impact to total cost and CO2 emissions. A winning plan has been built. The plan will be rolled out, and the consumer will soon experience the new packaging platform designed for the circular economy. So this was a brief about how technology can help solve those challenges. Now finally, for the winning approach uh, conclusion, uh, what it includes is a six-step process, wherein it starts with the make, which is the optimal material choice, as to what material is to be used for the packaging. Secondly, design of the package to make sure that it is meeting the life cycle or the KPI of this sustainable uh, of the company. And validating the packaging, which is testing of the durability and all in the virtual environment. Planning the production of the packaging, wherein it takes care of the end-to-end -end process and to make sure that the first time right product is produced. Fifth, optimize the logistic journey, wherein it defines as to where all it will start from beginning to sourcing till it goes to the recyclable or the location will be disposed of. And finally, educating the consumer to give him a consumer experience to make sure the consumer is educated on what the packaging is and how this can be disposed of to bring him in the circular economy. So that's all for today. Thank you. Board is a leading European supplier of premium lightweight paper boards. With the amount of packaging increasing, it's absolutely critical to improve sustainability, reduce carbon footprint, use more renewable materials, lightweight packages, avoid waste, avoid overpacking. We are producing 1.3 million tons of folding box board. If all that would be translated into 19 gram cereal boxes, that equals 160 million packages a day. If you can save 1% of that, it equals 1.6 million packages every day, an equal amount of carbon footprint saving in uh, reducing transportation emissions and so forth. We use this example to demonstrate how even a small decrease has a global impact. A very typical question from our customers is the paperboard, what we could recommend in their application. And sometimes customers required more advanced parameters, for example, box compression test results. And that then required us uh, to 
create a physical prototype, make the box, transport it uh, into our laboratory, do the testing, and then have a discussion with the customer. That was the initial approach. Now we have set a database for different materials. Using that database, we can then generate digital twins, then create it into a box design the customer wants, and then we can test, for example, the box compression strength test. Or even more, we can even simulate some uh, situations where the packages are used, like drop test or grip handling, for example. Now we can do uh, the comparison of different materials, uh, having the design of the customer in a matter of days using the platforms we have. We have compared and we have observed that we can be up to 85% faster. We are also able to, say, test in virtual world different kind of designs, for example, uh, and create, get some fundamental understanding what are the critical factors in designing the packets, designing the window cuts, for example. Sometimes it relates to improving packaging performance, quite often actually to sustainability. The whole beauty is in the fact that we save a lot of time. Physical prototype approach took typically, say, three weeks, and now we are able to provide a response to the customer in a matter of one or two days. We think that we are a leading company in providing this kind of capability to our customers. I believe that circular economy requires a lot of uh, value chain cooperation. And I, I think that these kind of platforms enable systemic approach to designing packages and reusing and circulating them in the circular economy loop. Thank you, Mr. Prasad, for all the informative content. Now let's move to the next session. Stay with us.